everyone, I'm Catherine with Free Tours by Foot and today I am coming to you from Times Square. Coming to Times Square to watch the ball drop on New Year's Eve is one of the most iconic ways to ring in the New Year. Every year more than 1 million people come into this area to take part in this celebration. And it is a fantastic thing to do, certainly experience you'll never forget. However, it can be a long evening and so you'll want some of our best tips for how to get a good spot so that you'll be able to see the ball drop really well, as well as some things that you can do to make sure that the evening is as comfortable and pleasant for you as it can possibly be. So let's go ahead and jump in. So every year the ball drop occurs here in Times Square. The ball is actually dropped from a building that's right behind my head right now. Um, it's at number one Times Square. That building is at 42nd Street, just below where Broadway and 7th Avenue cross one another. So even though that's where the ball drop happens, the viewing area where you can see the ball drop is actually relatively large. You can watch the ball drop along both 7th Avenue and Broadway. On Broadway, that viewing area goes from 43rd Street up to 50th Street. And on 7th Avenue, it goes from 43rd Street all the way up to 59th Street. The reason it goes up higher on 7th Avenue is 7th Avenue is straight up, whereas Broadway has a curve and you lose the view after a little while. There is another area, a corner of Bryant Park at 42nd Street and 6th Avenue, the northwest corner of Bryant Park. And there's a very small area where you can also see the ball drop from there. Now you can't just walk into Times Square along any street on New Year's Eve. This entire area is barricaded off and there are designated entry points that you'll have to go through. Those entry points are along 6th Avenue, 7th Avenue, Broadway, and 8th Avenue. Um, generally, those entry points are along those avenues towards the north and south ends of the entire viewing area. So that's how you can come into Times Square. But generally speaking, the lower the street number is where you're standing, the closer to the ball drop you are. So if you want to get that prime spot, we're going to talk about how to do that next. So our number one tip to have the best possible view of the ball is get here early. You'll probably actually hear me say that a few more times in this video, but it really is crucial. If you want to have one of those prime viewing locations, this area fills up very, very early. Even though the ball drop is not till midnight, your best bet to get one of the good spots is to be here no later than three o'clock in the afternoon. I know that sounds like an enormously long wait to go until midnight, but do keep in mind that while the ball drop is not till midnight, the festivities actually kick off around 6 p.m. Um, there's going to be entertainment and things going on, so it's not quite as long as a wait as it sounds. Um, next tip is the actual prime viewing spots, the best spots to see the ball are within what we would call the bow tie. The bow tie is from 42nd Street up to 48th Street where Broadway and, and 7th Avenue cross one another making a bow tie shape. Those are going to be the very best spots where you'll be able to see the ball drop itself on top of number one Times Square as well as some of the large viewing screens where they'll be showing the ball as well. Um, for disabled individuals, there is a specific viewing area at 44th Street and Broadway, and if you are in need of that area, you definitely need to get here early. That area fills up in the early afternoon, so you'll want to get here really right after lunchtime if you want to take advantage of that. If it is absolutely not possible for you to get here as early as we suggest, no later than 3 o'clock, um, then your best bet is to use one of the entry points along 6th Avenue rather than any of the others. And the reason we suggest that is because the 6th Avenue entry points will actually take you to the viewing area on 7th Avenue. Because 7th Avenue is straight and doesn't curve, you can see the ball much further north than you can on Broadway. So even if you end up on a higher street number, you might still be able to see what's going on. There are also big TV viewing screens to show you if you don't have a direct view of the ball from your area. Bonus, if you're on 7th Avenue at midnight, you might be able to look north and see the fireworks going off from Central Park, which will be just be directly to the north of you. Our next tip is to not try to use the Times Square subway station when you're coming to the area. The Times Square subway station will actually not be open. You will not be able to come out of that station. You'll have to use a station somewhat nearby. Some of the best options for you there are Rockefeller Center, or Grand Central Station or Penn Station. Those are all just a short walk away from this area, but definitely plan to use one of those stations and not the Times Square Station. 
And the other thing to know is if you can't get here early, you can't get into the viewing area, you can't get a great spot, don't panic. There are lots of other things to do in New York City on New Year's Eve besides attend the ball drop in Times Square. In fact, if you just head to a restaurant or a bar right here in this neighborhood, most of them will have some kind of celebration going on. All of them will be showing the ball drop on TV. You can certainly still participate in the fun. And if the ball drop just doesn't sound like your thing or it doesn't work within your plans to do all of this, then the other thing to know is there are a lot of things to do in New York City on New Year's Eve, not just attend the ball drop. We have a whole separate video of things to do in New Year's, New Year's Eve besides come to Times Square. So make sure you check out that video. You'll get lots of other tips of other fun things that you can do to ring in the new year. So you can maybe already tell by the fact that I suggested getting here no later than 3 p.m. for a midnight ball drop that this can turn into a very long evening. However, we have six essential tips to make this as good of an experience as it can possibly be. Um, one of the very first of those tips is to dress warmly. It does get cold in New York in December, so you want to wear lots of layers and prepare to be out in the elements for a long time. Another recommendation is to make sure you eat a pretty hearty meal before you get here. Bring snacks with you as well. Once you're in a spot and you've gotten that perfect viewing spot, you really won't be able to easily leave that spot to go get food. So you want to make sure you have something with you. Uh, something to know as well, even though it is New Year's Eve and it's very, very festive, public drinking is not legal in New York City, in Times Square included. So do not plan on bringing any kind of alcoholic beverages with you. Uh, which brings me to another very important point. There are no public restrooms in Times Square. Um, and do not assume that you will be allowed to pop into any of the businesses along Times Square to use theirs. Most of them will not let you do that. So prepare for the fact that you will not have access to a restroom for the duration of your time here. Something else that's really important to know is once you are in this spot, at some point they do actually close off Times Square. All of those barricade and entry points are closed off. So once you are in, you are in this area until midnight. So plan for that and be prepared for that. Bring things to do um, because you will be in for somewhat of a long wait. And lastly, they do not allow any kind of backpacks or large bags in this area. So plan accordingly when you're deciding what to bring with you. You don't want to get all the way here and realize you can't bring your bag in with you. So you do need to plan for that. So you may be sitting here wondering, why do this at all? Why do all of these people cram into Times Square every single year to ring in the new year? Why a ball drop? Uh, it actually goes back to an old maritime practice where a ball would be lowered from a point on land so that ship captains out in the harbor could reset their ship's chronometers. And starting in 1877, every day at noon, there was a ball drop on top of the Western Union Building in Lower Manhattan, and that made it so that New York City could run on a standardized time. Um, as far as why is a ball drop in Times Square on New Year's Eve, now that goes back to the New York Times newspaper. The New York Times newspaper moved their headquarters up here to Times Square, to number one Times Square, in 1904. And in honor of their move uptown, they hosted a New Year's Eve celebration. The first few celebrations did not involve a ball drop, though. They were fireworks displays. Um, but after a few years, they were told they could not do the fireworks displays anymore, and they needed a new way to ring in the new year for their celebration. So that the very first ball drop in Times Square was to ring in the 1908 New New Year and they lowered a ball down the pole on top of number one Times Square and a tradition was born. There have actually been several New Year's Eve balls though. We are on ball number six currently. The first three looked very similar to one another in design. They were just changing out the metals to make the ball lighter and lighter and eventually they added some colorful light bulbs and tweaked the design a little bit. Um, the first significant design change though was with the Millennium Ball for the Millennial New Year. That was the first design that looks more like our current ball with Waterford crystal and LED lights. The next ball change was in 2008 and that was for the centennial of this celebration. And the current ball, ball number six, is up there now and it was actually changed out just after ball number five. The reason they changed it out was to weatherproof it so that the ball could stay up all year long and every visitor that comes to Times Square, whether they're here around New Year's Eve or not, could at least see the New Year's ball and be a small part of the celebration. 
So hopefully this has helped you figure out whether or not coming to the ball drop in Times Square is the right option for you. And if it is not, that's okay. Like I said, there are lots of things to do in New York City on New Year's Eve. Make sure you check out our other video about what some of those things are. And if you do decide to come to the ball drop, it is a once in a lifetime experience. You will never forget it. But make sure you check out this video and, and consider some of these tips that we've given you to make it the best experience it can possibly be. And hopefully you will have the best New Year's you can. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you next time.